It's the Deep Slant 101 presented by Xfinity. My guest this week, Traymon Smith, kickoff returner, defensive back. He's in year four. All right, season four is not even over yet, and you've already got a contract extension. I imagine that's got to feel pretty nice for you, Traymon. Right. That's, it's really exciting just to know my hard work and dedication to the game is actually being viewed as a – and I'm getting viewed as a hard worker, so I love it. All right, are you, are you surprised that the deal got done in season? You're the first person with Nick Casario to have a deal done before the season's over. Is that – Kind of what you expected for yourself when you signed here this off season? Um, that's what I was hoping for. That's always what I'm hoping for, honestly. But just to be the first guy and to be one of the first ones uh, talking negotiation with the contract is is very exciting, and I'm uh, I'm excited to be here. All right, special teams coordinator Frank Ross. He said that since you got here, you've shown a lot of improvement. How do you think you've improved since you got here? Oh, uh, just with the little things, detailing, going out early to catch kicks. Just It's just all the little things I've focused on this year and tried to hone in on. Were you going out early on your own before practice? Or? Yes, and I did a lot of, a lot more at training camp too. So, I mean, that's just the things you got to do towards training camp to work to get better. And just so when I'm back there in the game, it's like second nature to me. It's just real easy. All right, so a few weeks ago at Tennessee, we saw you recover that muffed punt. Uh, that was a heads-up play because, first of all, it was like pouring down rain. Right. It happened all so quickly with the ball bounced off the guy's leg and you were right there. Um, you know, what was going through your mind on a play like that when things are sort of opening up so so quickly in that sort of weather? Right, so it was a plus 50. So my, my job was to go front up the return while A.J. ran the back line. And A.J. did a good job of running that back line. Noticed the, the punt returner, noticed how close A.J. was and tried to make him stop making the play. And that's when it hit his foot and I'm just – going to front with the return and I see the ball like I'm seeing it happen in slow motion really and just go to jump on it in the rain and slide a little bit and get dirty that was fun yeah it was real fun in the rain it was fun to watch it and was. and you also had a, a fumble recovery back as a rookie in 2018 right well, yes. and I believe that was against Seattle yes. uh so how do you work on fumble recoveries? Is that something that you just have to be hyper aware of all the time on special teams? Yeah, you just always got to be running to the ball, too, being aware of your surroundings, you know, whether to pick it up or dive on it. You just got to be aware of those little things and just be close to the ball, always pursuit to the ball. All right, so you started off your rookie campaign with Kansas City. Last year you were at the Colts, but that 2019 season you were with three different teams, three right? Different teams. Uh, so it was um, Kansas City. Um, it Bay. was – Green Bay, and then Philly. Ended in Philly, yeah. All right, so so what was that season like for you? That was just two years ago, but to right. bounce around with three different teams over the course of a season, you know, what was that like for you physically, crazy. mentally? It was crazy, you know, coming in, getting drafted, late-round draft pick, I understand that. But, I mean, I signed a four-year contract, so I'm just thinking, all right, I'm going to be here four years for sure. And then going into that next season, I mean, you can kind of tell when things aren't going your way or how, if you fall in a depth chart, even though you're not supposed to be looking into that. But I could start picking up on it. And then once I did get cut, they did – well, initially I made the team after training camp. I got moved to running back. I played a little offense, actually. They moved me oh, you did? Bit. Yes, and then I ended up making the team for defensive back again. And um, I don't know, after they released me, I, my coaches came and talked to me and was like, listen, you're a great player. You, I know you're going to get claimed. Like, we would love to sign you back to practice squad or whatever and just work you as a – fundamental player but I mean I got claimed by Green Bay and of mm. course like you no yes or no to that and I enjoyed my time in Green Bay I actually got to be around some good guys and Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams some generational talent players so that was good and then after Green Bay well I was there like 10 games went to Philly got cut again didn't get claimed this time didn't get claimed off waiver so I just weighed my options then and I felt like I don't know, since I was already moving, I was like, why not? Let's go try some a new city, new beginning. And didn't stay there long, though, so it didn't work out. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then you were with the Colts last year. But at, at, was there any point in your career, maybe that 2019 or 2020 season, where you started to lose hope and think, man, this is really rough, especially think going into the NFL thinking you're going to be with the team for four years, and then you had to bounce around so much. Did you ever get to a point where you sort of lost a little bit of faith or thought, I don't know uh, how this is going to go? Yeah, I, I, I feel like it was messing with my confidence a little bit for sure, just bouncing around, not basically being told you're not good enough for this team or you're not the right fit for this team. So, But I just stayed training and stayed to my fundamentals, doing the little things right. When I was practice squad, I just do, do extra reps and just do all the little things right and show these coaches they can trust me. And, of course, my talent is there, but just mainly building that trust. I imagine that when you play for so many different teams, you learn a lot about just the business of football and how things are done in different 
in different facilities. Right. What do you, what do you think you took away from from going to so many different teams in such a short amount of time? Or did you learn something about yourself through all that? Uh, I learned a lot from the players too. Of course, mm -hmm. I've been playing with some good players. Like dra drafted was with Eric Berry. Second year in Kansas City, Tyron come. I'm with him through training camp in like the first three weeks. So, I mean, just learning from those type of players, those elite players, I feel like that helped me a lot. And just hearing them tell me to remain focused and just stay the course, that's, that was really big to me. All right, in college at Central Arkansas, you handled punt returns too. So, I always have this question for returners. Why do you think that you're more of a kickoff returner in the NFL? Why not return punts too? Why do you think that your role is more on kickoffs and maybe not both or maybe one versus the other? Oh, uh, that's big props to Des King, Desmond King, too. He's a great punt returner. He's electric with the ball. So, I mean, having that one-two punch with us, we're two different type of returners. I'm more of a, like, one-cut guy. He's more of a zigzag, make a, make a lot of guys miss. So, I feel like that, that equals up to punt return better. And oh, yeah. With my running style, kick return better off fits me in that for this team in general. So Yeah, the down the downhill aggressive speed. You, yes. And, and Frank Ross said that, that you've got a lot of speed that you bring right. to the game. Did you ever run track or how did – I didn't. I never you didn't. ran track, no. I used to blame our asthma, but I grew out you of it. You have asthma? I did. You did. Grew out of it. You grew out of it. Yeah. So, like, you, what did you use your speed for? Did, did it help you in other sports? Oh, uh, so coming out really out of when I was getting recruited to college, all the college coaches, like the bigger schools, thought I was slow because, I mean, hmm. high school I played quarterbacks, but I never, like, sprinted through the end zone. I was, you played quarterback in yeah, high school? I was, like, a little 3A school, okay. sex high school. And, I mean, I didn't. Ha I never had to run full speed, so I never got to see it. So I realized I was fast probably my first, second year in college when the level – up and I really had to run. Sure, and that's when you realized that you were. Yeah, I'm fast. I knew I was fast. always fast because couldn't nobody get, run away from me in the corner. So <laughs> You're like, like I'm, I'm by up. myself yeah. while I'm running down the field. Bring the fastest guy. I'm gonna I'm line up with him. <laughs> All right, you trained with Justin Reed this off season. How did the two of you meet? Oh, uh, so we share the same trainer, Ryan Clark. So how how did me and Jay Reed end up meeting? Because you had signed here, but you had not really shown up for any activities yet. The right. offseason hadn't started. And, yeah, me and Jay Reed, we, like, right after the season over, we'll go to Ryan Clark and his facilities up there and just we talk ball with him a lot, learn a lot from him. You know, he played 12 years, won a Super Bowl. And just it's just a great – Ryan Clark just a great guy to be around. And then, of course, just me and Justin Reed training in the same facility. We ended up just clicking. And, and then you end up in the same team together the same as well, team, in like, the same backfield. Yeah, Lonnie was there too, actually. Oh, okay. So you, so you could sort of knew your backfield. Yeah, I knew too. Before you, was, before you actually had to yeah, start that was playing. Yeah, big for me, coming in knowing some guys. All right, our social media people tell me that you follow USA Pickleball on yes. Instagram. Yes. Uh, are you a former player, just a fan? So my agent loves pickleball. We do this trip in Naples every year after just after the season, and it's pickleball. He's heavy in pickleball. So your I mean, agent? I, yeah, my agent. Okay, yes, James and you, Prentice. And, and you? Yeah, and I play with him, of course, and okay. he'll, he'll fly out his clients or whatever. And, I mean, it's just like <laughs> life-size ping-pong to me. I love yes. it. But those, like, it's older people that play. It's an older sport. So those old old guys are pretty good, though. I yeah, guess. they have they have competitive championships. Those real competitive out there. Definitely in Naples. It's like the home of the pickleball. Or really? Home of the pickleball tournament. It's crazy, though. All right, so you just bought a home recently, too. I did. And, and you bought it in Houston mm -hmm. before the contract before extension. The contract. So you weren't afraid, like, I'm going to buy this house, and then I'm kind of stuck with Houston, no matter if Houston wants to be uh, stuck with me? I thought about it, but then I also thought as a investment, you know, if I wasn't, wasn't to sign back with Houston next year, maybe rent it out, Airbnb it out. Oh, maybe okay. to some of the players in-house. Who knows? So I thought maybe you just flew to Houston. You're like, I love this love. place. <laughs> i got to have a house here. I do love it out here, though. It's, city has everything you need. Yeah. Amazing food, and it's just huge. Like, definitely coming from Alabama. Yeah, I was going to say, it's kind Alabama. of a, a – I mean, you're still in the south with Alabama, but yeah. I imagine it's totally different. Totally different. Night and day. Not in day, yeah. but you you like Houston. Yeah, I love Houston. Besides the traffic. Though. Besides the traffic and maybe the summers. The summers, yeah. I'll take the hot any day, though. Yeah. yeah. Over the cold. Over the, yeah, yeah, because you've played in cold weather games. Green Bay, yeah. All right, so on your Instagram, you we found out that you have a dog. Mm -hmm. a Fr French, is it a French bulldog? French bulldog. Louis. Louis. Uh, so Louis, Louis has his own Instagram account. He does. Do you run Louis' Instagram I account? Do, I do, I do, I do. Okay, why did Louis need an Instagram account? Oh, uh, I feel like he needs to be showed off to the world. He's a great <laughs> dog. He's bad. He's real hyper, but he's a great dog he's, in general. He's spoiled yeah. a little bit? Spoiled a little bit. He's probably okay. at home just roam, roaming around right now, so. But he don't potty in the house, or he. That's just, important. That's important. That's key. That is the big thing. He just with sheds dogs. a little too much for my liking right now. Okay, Thank but you you got him well clothed though. Oh yeah, he has some clothes. He's in a lot of Louis Vuitton. Is that what inspired you to name yeah, him Louis? Yeah, so his name is really Louis T instead of Louis V. Louis Vuitton. Uh huh. Why Louis T? 
Uh, my name starts with a T. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, and it's spelled different. L O U I E E. Okay, that's, that's right. important. I thought maybe <laughs> I thought maybe the real Louis was taken on Instagram, so you just spelled different. No, right, so he's got a couple of e, he's got a couple of E's in his name. E's. All right, so he wears a lot of uh, Louis Vuitton, yeah. and uh, you you are also pretty fashionable yourself. Yes, I like fashion. A lot. How how would you describe your style? Because you grew up in Alabama, but I feel like there's like this West Coast vibe yeah. coming from you. Uh, I don't know, just just buying clothes. I, I have a bad problem with just going online and just buying clothes, see something I like, and eventually just put it together. I might not wear it to the next year, but, like, I got some <laughs> shoes and clothes that I haven't worn from last year or two years Really? Ago. But once I find the right time to wear it, it's got to be the right moment. Perfect. Yeah, it fits okay. Perfect. It just, and then do you rewear it, or do you just like put it to the back and then you I put it to the back. You know, just I I try not to re re wear it. Yeah. Especially like to a game. Like I'm not wearing none of those. Of outfits. course, because that those pictures are everywhere. Those pictures, yeah. So yeah. it's like I feel like I can't wear it then. Does twice. Does Louis T repeat outfits? Yeah, he does. <laughs> he has a bubble coat. He repeats. A bubble coat. <laughs> a bubble coat. Yeah. We, in Houston. We was in Indy. Yeah. It was when we was in Indy though. So. Oh. It was cool. We just brought it along with us. Yeah, he wears a little coat, but now now he's just, it's summertime, Perfect, yeah. so. Me and him going to take family pictures, too. They offering family Oh, pictures. my gosh. Are you going to post those on, yes, on his gram, your I gram have, as well? Mine, too. All Hopefully. right. We cannot wait to see it. Well, Tremon, congrats on the contract Thanks extension. So Can't wait to see what the rest of the year holds for you. Thanks for watching, and go Texans. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell for new content.